All right, come here, come here just real quick. Hey, just as a heads up, because of 2,000 subscribers, we're gonna give away a set of TheraBands. All you have to do to be eligible for this is just be a subscriber and comment on one of the videos. We're gonna choose someone at random and we'll reach out to you and then we'll send those your way. Thank you everyone for subscribing, watching, and leaving all the positive comments. It's been a pleasure doing all this and we look forward to creating more videos for you guys. Chica C asks, what do you think of supplements like glucosamine and collagen? Well, I haven't been very impressed by the research on it overall. And really, I would push you way more towards natural remedies for that, like exercise, okay? So we know that um, insulin growth factor one and human growth hormone, um, those are really gonna help increase our tendon healing. They've been proven in research and science and we can get an increase of those two hormones simply through exercise. They're promoted most through like big whole body movements such as like a deadlift or pull-ups and with like high volume exercise, also with short rest intervals in your exercise. So if you follow that and you just exercise, you can naturally increase those two hormones which will help with your healing. For the next question, Arnaud T asks, my osteotherapist told me not everyone is equal with flexibility. Depending on a lot of things, he even told me if I stretch a lot, I'm doing two to three times a week, I won't be super flexible because of my skin slash tissue. Well, part of that is true. I mean, if you grow up doing gymnastics, you're gonna have a higher baseline mobility than someone who wasn't doing that sport, but that doesn't mean that you cannot gain that flexibility. Part of what you said in that question was that you're doing it two to three times a week. If you go back and look at our stretching video where we answer most of the questions related to stretching, we wanna be doing like five or six times a week to notice those changes. So two or three times a week, you may just be like running in place, that's why you don't notice those changes. You know, there are genetic conditions where you, your connective tissue becomes too mobile, but unless you've been diagnosed with a genetic condition saying that you have limitations in your connective tissue, don't limit yourself, try to do these stretches, just really write everything down with how frequently you're doing it and try and pay attention to what works for you and your gains over that time. <sighs> okay, for our next question, Greg A asks, what are your insights about all the yoga stuff on the internet? I know that without linking any direct vid, it might be hard to answer, but is it worth it to do in terms of increasing mobility? I mean, absolutely, yeah. If, if you look at your like yoga instructors who are practicing this like five, six, maybe even seven times a week, they're some of the most flexible people that you know. A lot of people do yoga maybe one time a week, and if you watched our video about stretching, you'll know that consistency is key. So if you like that yoga routine that you're doing every week, supplement that. Find your weaknesses or your trouble areas and do those stretches, so it might only be you know a few minutes every day, but do that more often and still go to your yoga classes. You may find an improvement while you're in those classes and you'll find an improvement hopefully with climbing as well. All right, so now for the big question, the question that's all on our minds right now because we're all kind of quarantined at home, we're not able to go out and climb, the climbing gyms are closed, etc. Let's address this. So can I come back uh, stronger from this break without actually climbing? Climbing is a skilled sport, okay? So we have to be able to practice it to start improving, but there are ways to improve on this break. Develop that training program that you've always wanted to do but never had the time to. Focus on your weaknesses with the training program, like your core strength or your hamstring strength if you're not good at heel hooks, and use it as an opportunity to actually rest and recover from those nagging injuries you just don't want to rest from. Are your tendons gonna go to shit? <laughs> Tendon strength takes a long time to build up. It also takes a lot longer for it to go away. Your muscular endurance may go down, but that'll come back. The tendon strength is not gonna go away just like that. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And until next time, cheers. Great question. I do think we're hilarious. I mean, it's kind of obnoxious, like, I'm afraid I'm gonna make the whole thing fall over. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> Is that good? Should I rotate it a little bit? Okay, I thought it was Chica C. Chica C? Chica -C? Mm -hmm.
Love it, you're amazing. You have such good humor. Oh, that's not what he asked. So, my art theory, oh, I gotta restart, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I'll do it one more time. Um, without, I, darn it, 2,000 subscribers, huh? You want free stuff? <laughs> I got free stuff for you. I'm just drunk enough to give it to you. <laughs> Tea life. Don't drink in YouTube, everyone. <clears throat> All right, okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh. Uh, switch legs. I'm getting better at this. Oh, oh hey, you're still here. Jason, they're still watching. Oh, hey, oh. Dude, say something cool so they like the videos and subscribe for more awesome content. Um. Like and subscribe for more super sweet vids, y'all. So lame, dude. So lame. I thought it was pretty good.